Hey guys, Nova Joe here. Uh, today I come to you with a classic EDF game, uh, Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon from 2010. Uh, I said classic, but I use that term loosely. Um, anyway, guys, uh, this is a EDF game that doesn't really get much love, and there's good reasons for why it doesn't get much love. However, I thought it would be fun to revisit it, check it out, uh, see why people don't like it, um, as well as point out some of the things that the game did do quite well. Um, things that were, in my opinion, improvements over some of the other games and some games that came after it. Uh, so anyway, guys, this is Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. I'm playing it on the Xbox 360, so let's get into it. Alright guys, uh, first off, let's take a look at what Insect Armageddon offers us. Uh, you have Campaign, Campaign Remix, and Survival. Uh, if I remember correctly, a Campaign Remix is unlocked once you actually beat the game. And basically, it's just the missions, but reconfigured in a way so that enemies appear at different times, and enemies that didn't show up at this spot show up now. Uh, it, it's, it's okay. Uh, and this is where we get into the first gripe with Insect Armageddon. There's only 15 missions for the campaign, and 15 missions for Campaign Remix. And essentially, Campaign Remix, it's the same missions, just different enemy placement. Um, so all together, there's really just 15 missions. And for those of you out there who are longtime EDF fans, you know that that is not acceptable. Uh, we need 50, 60, 70, 80 missions. Uh, EDF 2017, if I remember correctly, it came with... Uh, 50 some missions if I remember right and uh, they've just progressively gone further and further uh, with with 80 some missions and then you got the DLC packs that add an additional 30 missions so as EDF fans we know that when we play the, these games we want missions and that's where one of the problems is um, survival mode is just your typical survival mode you just see how long you can last it's, it's fun little diversion uh, but if I remember correctly and I haven't played that part in years uh, any progress you make in survival mode, it doesn't add to your character's experience, so they don't level up off of anything you do there. It's just for fun. So those are the initial options that we have with Insect Armageddon. Now here's one of the pros with Insect Armageddon. Um, bots. And what I mean by that is you have teammates that work with you. Uh, your teammates will heal you when you go down. Uh, your teammates will fight right alongside you, and they will follow you, and you can even give them orders. So the AI squad mates are, they're just awesome, because they really help you out in this game. They, they do so much more than any other EDF game. I mean, <laughs> guys, we know that the AI for the soldiers in 4.1 is horrible. They'll shoot the wall, shoot the ground, that's not the case here. These bots are actually really, really good, really helpful. Um, they really, uh, they really assist you, and so that's a that's a definite pro that this game has that all other EDF games are sorely lacking. All right, guys, let's take a look at the character classes. Uh, much like 2025 and 4.1, you have four character classes. You have uh, the battle the jet, the tactical, and the trooper. Uh, the trooper is just like the ranger, for the most part. They, they're your ground soldier and uh, run around with the machine guns and things of that nature. Uh, then you've got your tactical, which kind of acts like the air raider, only they don't call in vehicles or things of that nature. Uh, but they do have turrets that they can lay out on the ground, and as they level up, they'll unlock new turrets that they can use. Um, for instance, right now with this guy, I currently have... Uh, let's see here. I currently have a MG turret and a plasma turret, and they're they're pretty cool. One's a machine gun, one's shoots out plasma blasts, and they you have an energy meter for the. I'm getting ready to say for the aerator. You have an energy meter for the tactical guy, and that energy meter will deplete as you uh, use your different turrets. However, uh, once you cancel the turret. Uh, or the turret runs out of energy, then you get your energy back and can call in another one. So it's it's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Uh, let's go back here, 
and we'll take a look at the next character class, which is Jet. Um, Jet is kind of like the wing diver, and this is where you could basically make an argument for some people might say the jet is better than the wing diver and obviously you're gonna have those that say the wing diver is better than the jet um, with jet you have plasma based weapons and so that's definitely something that's carried over into 2025 and onwards uh, however uh, while the jet can fly he, he can't fly as well or as or maneuver as well um, as wing diver but the one thing that the jet has that the wing diver doesn't and this might be a, a benefit for a lot of people is that he has a hover that sends him across the ground uh, very fast as you all know the wing diver moves pretty terrible uh, she moves pretty terrible when you're just walking across the ground she's slow as molasses but the jet has a he has a, a boost and that boost will act like a run so he can scoot across that gr the ground very well, very fast, cover ground quickly. So that's, that's a pro that he has, but the con is that his flight abilities are pretty terrible. Basically, you can fly up to the top of a, bil of a building, shoot down, and that's about the extent of it. Don't expect to be flying all over the map uh, like the wing diver does. And then you have Battle, and Battle kind of acts like a fencer. It's your heavy guy. He has the heavy armor. Uh, carries the the big cannons and basically he's kind of like your fencer but I think he maneuvers a tad bit better in my opinion um, now <laughs> guys EDF is known for its weapons and its weapons have names that we can remember Lysander Z uh, you've got your your AF series of weapons uh, you've got these uh, different battle mechs and things like that that you can that you know you you know the names of these things uh, you you know that when somebody says this weapon name you usually know what they're talking about when referring to like 2025 uh, 2017 and uh, 4.1 you, you guys know it look at these weapon names guys how can you even remember these Okay, let's take a look at the battle. <laughs> You've got the Sh System Arms B O M G. Um, you've got the Ornreisinger Chinagon L E two. Um, you've got the Bo Borobull K six, the Van Snaster Heavier Chaser. Uh, I mean, those names just roll right off the tongue, guys. And that's one of the problems that you see here with the weapons in this game is that the names don't stick with you. So as you're selecting weapons for your guys, you almost have to reread the descriptions just to remember what this weapon did because the name's not going to ring a bell like somebody says lysander z and you go oh yeah the kick butt sniper rifle yeah i know what that is uh but uh you go around telling somebody uh, hey, hey guys y'all remember the the wallingus pop star they're gonna go what uh what about the oh oh yeah guys af 100 oh yeah yeah that super awesome machine gun the af 100 yeah i remember that um uh well what about the the wallingus lc y'all y'all remember that or the Brooks Fab P1G. Uh, yeah, you guys get the point. You know what I'm saying here. So anyway, guys, that's the character classes. All right, guys, we're going to head and jump in here to one of the missions so you can see the gameplay. And here's one of the, the pros that I have for this game. It's these little on-rail shooter segments. I, I like them. They're a nice little diversion from the same game or from the playing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, kind of breaks up the monotony. Uh, this is actually the very first level, so they actually start you out in this little shooter section. So it's a nice little way to pick off some ants real quick and get some uh, uh, experience points, which is really good. But um, I actually do like them. They're fun. So as you can see here, we're flying into our first mission, and I'm playing as the jet. Um, <laughs> here's a little story about EDF and, and myself. EDF 
Insect Armageddon is the very first EDF game I ever played. And I wasn't sold on EDF. I, I didn't understand what all the hoopla was about. I'd always heard great things about EDF, but I did not know that there was a huge difference between 2017 and, uh, and Insect Armageddon. I thought they were probably made by the same company and uh, had the same uh, everything other than some upgrades. And so when I played this, I wasn't sold on it. Um, I was actually rather disheartened because I had gone out and spent 40 bucks on this game and found it to be lackluster. I was so hyped up after hearing everything about 2017 that that I just was so disheartened over this game. Um, and <laughs> being the dummy I was, I wrote EDF off for the longest time because I was like, well, if this game is supposed to be an improvement over 2017, then then I'm not even going to like 2017, so there's no point in even picking it up. I did not know they were made by different developers. So, anyway, chalk that up to experience. Um, here's another con. Watch what happens when I shoot an ant. Here, let's go to a gun that doesn't explode. <laughs> uh, what, what are these ants doing, guys? They disintegrate. Yes, they flat out disintegrate. They don't blow apart. Heads don't go flying, torsos don't go flying. You don't have uh, legs going this way and thoraxes going that way. You just simply have disintegrating bugs. And that's pretty lackluster, if you ask me, especially after seeing everything that EDF could do in 2017. Even guys going all the way back to EDF1 Monster Attack on the PS2, guys, the PS2. Would, would have corpses left. You had corpses. Your enemies... <laughs> your enemies would remain on the PS2. On here, they're, they're gone in a heartbeat. Granted, I guess that was probably to save the frame rate, but still, I digress. We love our bug corpses laying around. <laughs> we love parts going and flying. It, it adds to the dynamic nature of the game it adds to the immersion factor of the awesomeness that is edf we know what we love guys we know why we love edf and this game got a lot of those things wrong um another thing that's a con the weapons it says there's 300 weapons in this game but these weapons these weapons don't have any impact they're not awesome the explosions are weak. The carnage of killing bugs is mediocre at best. Uh, I mean, your bugs disappear. Your weapons barely feel like they have any punch to them. Oh, did you see that explosion, guys? Oh, how awesome was that? Oh, yeah, it was so awesome, wasn't it? It was a low-class explosion. Guys, you all know what a dropship does, and... 2025 you know what a dropship does in 4.1 um, you know what a dropship does in 2017 which came before this they explode in a blaze of glory and drop the frame rate to nothingness I mean <laughs> that's this game is lacking that it does not have that awesome awesome EDF effects it doesn't have the explosions it doesn't have the the weapons with the great impact a lot of them just feel the same and granted there'll be a lot of people who can argue that about the other games but those who have played they know what I'm talking about here's something that is cool though uh, your little mounds that, that the ants and stuff come out of you actually have to put a charge on them to destroy them for good uh, and so that adds to the sense of urgency uh, when you're playing on the harder difficulties because you'll be sitting there and you'll be blasting the ants and you'll close the hive but you've got all these other ants coming at you and you're trying to get a charge laid on that hill uh, to blow it up and so you're just trying to keep them off of the mound so that you can get over there and put the charge on before they reopen it as a sense of urgency and, it, and it's fun um, another con another reason that guys or another reason that gamers who love EDF don't love this game there's no real variety in levels, guys. 
you playing in the city 90 plus percent of the time and you've got a few little uh, kind of like I guess you could say subway type areas um, yeah, something to that effect but like canals you got like these canals and things but guys it doesn't add anything to the game it doesn't add anything at all to the game so you're primarily playing on city streets the whole time while well, the buildings do look cool when you blow them up um, and that is a neat destructive thing and I love the, the clouds of dust that rise up from the ground where's my open fields where's my uh, giant mech onslaught that, <laughs> that you would see coming in um, Where's my 2017 level? Where's my crimson, guys? Where's my crimson map? Where's my beach? You don't get that in here, guys. You get 15 levels that are primarily the city. You don't have the variety that you have in the other games. And there would be people who argue that those games didn't have variety. But those games had tons of variety when you compare them to this. This game is lacking in in level variety on so many different on so many different levels. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, you've got, you, you've got all these different things, these weak explosions, disintegrating enemies, weapons that are kind of lame, if you ask me, uh, and don't have impact. You've got just no variation in the stages. You're, you're just, you just don't have much. This game feels like a budget game. And granted, I know that there's no huge, huge, uh, budget for EDF but this game makes 2017 and the EDF games on the PS2 look like there were AAA titles when it comes to the, to the graphics and 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 the amount of levels and things of that nature uh, anyway guys uh, enough about the cons let me tell you some of the pros that this game did do better uh, you've got characters that do have some things that I wish uh, the character classes in EDF 4.1, 2025, whatnot had. Like I said, you've got the ability to hover across the ground with the jet. You've got a shield that's built in on on every single battle mech, which would be great on the fencer, so you didn't have to take up one of your weapon spots. Um, you've got a progression system. Yeah, guys, this this is a progression system in here, which is it's kind of fun. Uh, you can level each character up to level 8, and uh, as you level up, once you hit a different level, your armor will go up, so you don't have to pick up armor boxes anymore. And, and to some, that might be uh, a con, that might be a con to some, but to others it might be fun not to have to uh, worry about running around picking up armor boxes all the time. Um, so there is some fun to be had with, with leveling up on your own. Are there some... Sorry guys, I get so tongue tied when I'm trying to play and talk at the same time. And you all know I've said that in numerous other videos. But anyway guys, there's something to be said for just being able to stay in the action and not have to worry about chasing down red boxes. Uh, and some people will like that, and this game does offer the ability for you not to have to go chase red boxes. But there will be those who view that as a con because they like the grind. So. It's subjective. This, that part's subjective. So to each their own there. Um, you've got... Uh, well, here's another... Let me let me get this out of the way. Uh, there's another con. Uh, guys, we love seeing those green boxes, don't we? We love seeing uh, all those green boxes fall and the excitement of thinking, oh man, I might have another weapon. Uh, there might be a new weapon here for me to get. And so you're sitting there and you're excited and you you go chasing down all these you go chasing down all these green boxes well all right guys that's not here uh, are there weapon boxes yes but they don't drop from the standard uh, enemies they drop from more of your bigger enemies like your bosses kind of like this hector here uh, so that's another con okay guys we all know how hectors react uh they're supposed to sh contort and shake and twist when they're blasted watch what happens when I blast this one. Oh, what he's no he stands perfectly still he doesn't flinch or anything okay 
Well, let's uh, let's kill this Hector and let's see what happens. Let's see if he explodes in a blaze of glory. And well, what's he doing? Oh, he disintegrates like the bugs. And oh, there it is, guys. There's your weapon box. All right. So in all that killing, I've picked up one weapon box. It says there's 300 weapons. So you're gonna have to do a a lot of playing through levels to get that one or two weapon boxes that you get and I do have to be fair there are some other levels where there's a lot of those bigger enemies and you might walk away with grabbing 10 weapon boxes but it's not the same and that's that's definitely a con uh, I can't see anybody being happy about that um, another one of the pros is that they have some really cool uh, enemies in this game uh, that you haven't seen other places and I will be the first to say that um, EDF Sandlot you're getting a little stagnant with your with your enemies you're getting a little stagnant and we all know it we've got ants we've got spiders we've got bees and we get a lot of those uh, give us some new things guys give us some cockroaches give us some uh caterpillars give us there's i mean this is on god's green earth he created hundreds of thousands of different insects pick a few guys pick a few <laughs> a few more um this game actually gave you um a giant like tick spider and it spits out all these different little ticks and stuff and that was cool it was grotesque but it was cool and then you had the praying mantis. That was that was neat, guys. A praying mantis, now, one of the most fearsome-looking insects in nature, and it was in this game. It we should be getting some of that stuff. I mean, EDF2 had centipedes, and they've taken them out. Give us the centipedes back. Give us millipedes. Give us wasp. Uh, give us oh geez, uh, the possibilities are endless. Give us some of the nasty creatures that are out there. Some of them nasty insects that everybody just wants out of the way. <laughs> we love our ants and we love our spiders, but give us some more. So this game does give you a few extra enemies. So anyway, guys, let's just sum this up real quick. Cons. Bugs instantly disintegrating. Weapons are, are pretty lame and unimpressive. you got a lack of levels. You've really got 15 levels, and then you get a remix, which remixes the same 15 levels so some might say you got 30 um, there's not much variation to the to the levels they're all pretty much running through the city uh, you've got weak explosions you've got lame graphics there's this game doesn't have the polish that 2017 had uh, but then you got your pros you've got a progression system that's kind of fun it, it's kind of fun to level up um, and it feels a little different than armoring up, I guess you could say. It, it's fun to see that stat increase. Um, you've got uh, characters that have some unique abilities, like the battle guy has his own personal shield built in, which can like shoot electricity and things like that out. Uh, you've got your tactical guy that has turrets that he carries with him uh, always, and he can drop them out whenever he wants to. You've got a couple new creatures that uh well granted one of them is a spider but it's it's a grotesque spider that shoots out ticks that's nasty and that's cool and it's fun to kill those things and then you get praying mantis um, then you got some rail shooting segments some people aren't going to like that but but i i do i think that's pretty cool um and like i said you've you've got the, the armor boxes you don't have to pick those up anymore some people will like that some people won't uh, and like the final con I'll say is you don't get many weapon drops in this game. You have to play the levels a lot uh, to get the weapon drops. So anyway, guys, that is EDF Insect Armageddon. It was my first taste of EDF, and I it left a bad taste in my mouth. I walked away from it and uh, didn't come back for years. But... As a third-person action game, it's not bad. It's not bad. But as an EDF game, it is not. This is not an EDF game. It doesn't feel like an EDF game. It doesn't play like an EDF game. And us EDF fans know what an EDF game is. We know it because Sandlot has made it.
and there's a feel to them that you can't get anywhere else. You all know what I'm talking about. You EDF fans, longtime EDF fans, you know what I'm talking about. There's a feel to an EDF game, and it crosses every single version of the game that is made by Sandlot. So anyway, guys, pick this game up. It's cheap. It's inexpensive. It won't cost you much. Um, it's You can get it for less than $10, and it's an all right third-person action game run-through. But I don't recommend this to first-time EDF players. Don't get this game if this is your first chance to play EDF. Go get 2017 or 2025, whichever you can get your hands on. Jump into those. So anyway, guys, enough of my rambling. This was a look-back review on Insect Armageddon, a game that's six years old. And, ugh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, guys... As always, take care, God bless, and keep on gaming.